I'm with Lisa Jones of Women on Boards, who is going to tell us about the wonderful work that she does. Um, Lisa, over to you. Can you tell us a little bit about your company and what it does? Yes, thank you. So Women on Boards really exists to encourage and inspire women to take on senior roles and senior roles in the organisations that they work for, but also non-executive roles, non-executive direct roles outside their company, because we really believe and passionately believe that there are opportunities for women at all stages of their career to take on non-exec roles, weave them into their executive career plans. And why? Because it really helps you build that career leadership potential and it gives you exposure to the boardroom really early on. So that's what we're about. We don't think women need training. We just think they need the information to be able to navigate themselves into those positions. So our role at Women on Boards is simple. We want to support women on that journey. And it's about helping you navigate the way. It's about getting you to understand what gets you ahead in an organisation. So that's who we are. That is fantastic. And I know um, for anyone who's been following the progress of the charter that uh, we discovered with the Corn Ferry report that there are many gaps in the path to leadership. So could you speak to us a little bit about um, if someone came to you and said, OK, I'm ready for a role as a non-exec or an exec, what walk me through the process of what would happen? Well, what we need to be able to do is look at our sort of executive careers and look at that skill set that is board relevant. And that's what we help you identify. So working out your transferable skills, what makes you relevant to the boardroom, and then enable you to sell yourself, really. Pitching yourself for a non-exec role outside your company is just different. You need to write your CV in a different way. And that's part of our process to help and support you look at what the relevant roles are, and then think about how you broker yourselves into those positions. And it's just about information. We do not lack the skills. We just lack maybe sometimes the confidence and maybe the information that we need to take on these positions. I think that's really interesting because um, one of the things that's come up time and again as we're going through the process of creating the UK Charter for Women in Aviation and Aerospace is visibility. You're talking about how to um, how to see your transferable skills. Would you walk me through a little bit of how, for example, if I came to you and said, okay, I've got X, Y, and Z skills, how would you help me tease those out in order to see where else I could go? Well, I think it's about what a board's looking at. So, you know, boards are not, you know, they're full of different people doing different things. They're not all doing the same thing. So it's like, you know, have you got some legal skills? Have you got finance skills? Have you got technical skills? Have you got digital skills? It's about working out how you sell yourself in a way that makes you relevant for the board. Um, And I suppose that's the critical first thing is identifying those transferable skills. And often those transferable skills are aggregated over the course of our career. It's not necessarily just what we've been doing in the last six months or in the last position. It's about thinking about that over the course of your career. What experience, what skills, what sort of business benefit have you brought to to an organisation? And how how do you then put that in a way that makes you makes you relevant for that board it's about your pitch process isn't it and what you're selling in this process is you're selling yourself and often we're not great at selling ourselves the language that we use undersells us rather than oversells us so those are the sorts of things that we would look at to help you put your your personal sales pitch together in probably the most um, advantageous way And this is brilliant. Um, You also talked about confidence and women having perhaps a lack of confidence. Um, I love the fact that you're addressing the sales aspect and saying, hey, how do you actually getting people to see where they fit on a board or see women to see where we would fit on boards? Um, Do you do any work to bolster people's confidence as part of your process or make some recommendations? Um, I think the the issue is that often minorities in organisations want to be confident, competent before they're confident. And we kind of want to dispel that myth because most people have got a skill set that's very, you know, they're very capable. 
And so it's just working with women to say, actually, let's unpack this. You do have the skills. You, you've got the capabilities and it's giving them those tips and tricks, I suppose, to sort of say, you know, when you find yourself in an organization and you think, gosh, you know, look around you and there's not many people like you. What are the tips and tricks? What do you need to know to navigate that landscape well? Um, and I think it's the same if you're look, applying for roles internally or you're applying externally for non-exec roles. You know, it's really important that you do have key strategies to enable you to get ahead and some of that inevitably is about your personal branding and understanding how you sell yourself there's other things too I love that I'm going to take that away and take note anyone who's watching this you don't have to be competent before you're confident because when is the point when you decide that you're ready I think is what you're saying when I think a lot of women are ready a lot sooner than they might perceive Uh, definitely so yeah think about your brand think about your visibility think about how you sell yourself think about what you're good at and that's a very personal thing it's not hiding behind the organization that you work for it's about understanding your skill set and what makes you good and relevant for internal positions and external positions and I know at some point, Lisa, um, it, this is fascinating to me, and I know at some point um, that when we organise an event at the Charter, we're definitely going to want to hear more on this and for you to expand. Um, what has drawn you into um, being in conversation with us in the Charter? How do you feel about the fact that there even is a Charter information for UK Uh, women in aviation and aerospace? Well, I think we at Women on Boards are really closely aligned with the charter, its values and what it's setting out to do. You know, we've been making progress to see more women get promoted into boardrooms and that's starting to happen, certainly not at the levels and rates that we would like, but it's starting to happen. And anything that we can do to support women on that journey to get into those senior leadership roles, that's what we're about. And it's and it's just about saying, take some time, think about this. And, and we talk, talked about visibility. I think there's other things as well that we need to look at um, in organizations of what are the invisible barriers. And once we understand that, then we can use strategies to, to, to work out how we make ourselves visible, how we find our voice in meetings. Those sorts of things are really important. You know, having sponsors, having people who are going to mentor you, uh, understanding influence in an organisation. These are really key strategies that women can use quite simply just to think about where they are in the organisation, what's going on and what strategies they can use to get themselves ahead. And and. Evidently, you yourself are a prime example of um, someone who um, is in a in a position of great competency, of leadership. You seem like a very confident woman. The organisation that you're uh, working with and working for is just fantastic and very visible. Could you speak to me a little bit about um, a little snapshot of how you got to what you're doing today? Yeah, so that's really interesting. So I got my first board role when I was 29. um, And I kind of look back now and think, gosh, what did I know? And probably the reality is I knew very little, but I got a seat at the table and it was really pivotal for me. I absolutely loved the board space. I loved being in that senior leadership role. Um, And that really then changed the course of my career. So I've been, since then I've been working either as a non-exec or as an exec on boards. And I've become really passionate about it because I think actually women are just simply not being asked and they've got the skill set. So what I joined Women on Boards and I'm part of their story because I just want to inspire and encourage more women to think about getting into senior leadership. Because the more women we get into senior leadership, the more women that we get into board roles, it starts to change the culture of an organisation Joining organisations when you don't see anybody who looks like you is really challenging. Um, So, you know, we're just starting to shift the landscape, I think, is what I feel passionate about. And for me, that pivotal moment was taking on board roles because you're in a senior position and then you've got influence to change things. That that is fantastic. So if anyone is watching this and is wondering whether she's ready 
Um, not you are. Guys, sorry, I'm talking to the women specifically on this, although we welcome all. Absolutely, absolutely. Men have to be part of the solution. Yes, absolutely. Um, but if anyone is watching this and thinking, oh, you know, I, I think I could be ready. I'm not sure, but I might be. I'd urge them to connect with you. Um, how could they do that, Lisa? So just simply by Google searching us, you know, www.womenonboards.net. Uh, just check us out. We would say that you are never too young to join a board. Uh, and I think that's a really key point. You're never too young to join a board. So just come along and just, just see what membership offers and how we can support you in our journey to realise your board ambitions. That's fantastic, Lisa. And I'd love to track this and see if anyone um, or not when someone does come on board from watching this as part of the charter. It'd be interesting to uh, track their journey with you. So um, so will you be happy to come and speak to us again at another point? I'd absolutely love to come and speak to you again, because um, the more women, as I say, the more women that we get in those positions, the more things begin to change. And, you know, we all need role models. Um, so, yes, I'd be more than happy to talk to you more about what we do and how we support women. Lovely. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. And for anyone who doesn't know, my name's Liz Mosscroft. I sit on the communications committee for the Charter. And we'd love one and all to get involved with the charter as well. And you're not too young, too old, too anything to be involved with the charter. So we're going to put details to contact Lisa and how you can contact us at the charter to get involved with helping shape it. Thank you so much, Lisa, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. It was lovely to talk to you, Liz.